are you looking to set up a lightning node? If so, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Hannah with Lightning Labs, and in this video, we're going to walk through setting up an LND node. So if you're not already familiar with Bitcoin's Lightning Network, well, it's a second layer built on top of the Bitcoin network. It's a way to exchange Bitcoin transactions, real Bitcoin transactions, with others on the network in a trustless and nearly instant fashion. If you are new to the Lightning Network, you'll want to check out the conceptual overview found at docs.lightning.engineering slash d-lightning-network slash lightning-overview. There you'll find the information you'll need to understand what's happening on the Lightning Network and to start using it. So let's get started setting up our LND node. While there are many different setup options, what we're going to do here is set up a mainnet full node with Bitcoin Core as the backend and LND as a Lightning implementation. And we're going to do this all on an AWS server running Ubuntu. But as we walk through this setup, we'll note where settings can be changed if you'd like to run on testnet or use Neutrino as your backend, etc. You can follow along with everything we're doing here by reading through the run LND guide, which can be found at docs.lightning.engineering slash lightning dash network dash tools slash LND slash run dash LND. First things first, we'll need a server. The run LND guide gives instructions for configuring an AWS EC2 instance for an LND node. So we won't dive into that in much detail here, but I will note that as we've opted to set up a mainnet full node, we'll need to give our server enough storage space to download the whole Bitcoin blockchain. So we'll make a directory for our blockchain data and mount our additional storage space there. One other setup note is that you'll want to make sure that your firewall and any network protection allows access to ports 9735, the peer-to-peer -peer port, and 10009, the gRPC port. And once you've got your server space configured and ready to go, we can start by installing Bitcoin. First, we'll want to make sure we have all the tools we need to install and run Bitcoin properly by downloading a number of packages. And again, you can find all of these commands in the run LND guide. Now that we have our dependencies, let's clone the Bitcoin core repo, CD in there and run the autogen file. In this next command, we're giving lots of instructions on how to configure this install. For example, we're setting this up with ZMQ, but without the GUI, etc. Once that finishes, we can run the make command and install. We can use the Bitcoin Core authentication script to generate credentials for us. So download that script and make a note of the credentials that are generated. So now we have Bitcoin Core installed, we need to configure it before starting it up. We can set the configuration for Bitcoin in the bitcoin.com file. So let's create the file and have a look through. Here are the generated RPC credentials. Testnet is set to zero because we're setting up a mainnet node. And we're running just the daemon without the UI. We've also told Bitcoin where to store the blockchain data. We've set up the ZMQ address, etc. What you can see here is the recommended configuration for the node setup we are demoing, but you'll want to adjust these settings to suit your needs. Once you're happy with your settings, it's time to start up the Bitcoin daemon, Bitcoin D. We'll also add Bitcoin to cron tab to be sure that it starts up on a reboot. We can also do some things to make managing our node easier, such as adding an easy link to the debug logs and perhaps creating a file to rotate the logs. But let's test that Bitcoin is running properly by trying out a few commands. We can, for example, run a simple Bitcoin CLI command such as get best block hash and make sure that we get an expected response. Now that we have a working Bitcoin node, let's add lightning to it. So let's install LND. As always, first we start with dependencies. LND is written in Golang, so we'll need to be sure that Go is installed on our server and is a recent version. You can check your version with the command go version. If you get this response, well, that means it's not installed and you'll have to set it up. 
So let's do that here by first updating and upgrading, and then downloading Go via wget. We'll then extract it and install it. If you're not already familiar with Go, well, you need to know that you'll have to add the Go path to your profile. We'll also need build tools, so let's install that as well. And then it's time to clone the LND repo and install LND. We'll clone the repo, cd into the LND directory, and check out the latest version. We'll then run the make and make install commands, and here we are showing you the recommended tags. Again, all these commands can be found in the run LND guide. And just like we did for Bitcoin, we'll want to create a configuration file and use it to give LND lots of configuration instructions. Shown here are suggested settings, but let's walk through them and note a few options. You can set an alias or color. You can set your external IP address, etc. LND works with a number of different backends, BTCD, Neutrino, and of course, Bitcoin Core, which is what we are demonstrating here. Here is where we tell LND about the backend that we are using. You can change this to bitcoin.testnet equals one if running on the testnet. Here is where we let LND know that we are using the Bitcoin Core daemon, Bitcoin D. If we were using another backend, such as Neutrino or BTCD, we would need to update this line. And since we are using Bitcoin D, in this section, we'll give LND the specifics, including the RPC password that we generated earlier. So let's start LND. Now let's generate a wallet password using OpenSSL. And now we create our wallet using the lncli create command. We'll follow the prompts, use the wallet password as the initial password, but we won't set a cipher seed password. We'll also want to edit cron tab so that LND runs on startup. And if you want, here is how to create a sim link to get easy access to your logs. If you like, you can also use systemd to ensure that LND starts on boot. Now let's have a look around at our shiny new node. I'll show you where you can find commonly used files and how to connect to some peers. When working with LND, you may want to find your macaroon files. Macaroons are, of course, fancy cookies that allow you to request certain data and actions from your node. LND's macaroons allow us to have fine-tuned interactions with LND nodes. Now let's try unlocking our wallet and connecting it to some peers. The run LND guide contains the addresses of some nodes you can try to connect with, which will help your node to gather info on the network graph. Here is a command you can use to do that. And you can view the nodes uh, that you are connected to by running the lncli command list peers. So now you're on the Lightning Network and connected to some peers, but you're not quite done yet. You can't make or receive payments until you set up some channels. So how channels work, managing your nodes channels, inbound and outbound liquidity, et cetera, these are all interesting and important topics that you'll want to dive into when running a node, but they are outside the scope of this video. So here we'll just note that you need to have at least one channel open on the network to be able to properly use the Lightning Network. Before you can open a channel, you first need to have some Bitcoin to put into that channel. When we have funds and when we are connected to another node, we can then attempt to open a channel with that node. We can use the lncli open channel command to do that. And here you can specify the amount of funds that you would like to put into that channel. Once you have a channel set up, you can then create invoices, send payments, and fully participate on the Lightning Network. But before we go, we need to talk about backups. A very important note here is that backing up a Lightning node is a bit different from backing up a Bitcoin wallet. Those of you who are familiar with backing up a crypto wallet will know that what you need to do is back up your seed phrase and keep it safe. This is true of an LND node as well, but there are some additional files that you need to add to your backup because you're not just backing up on-chain funds. We also need to have data on our channels to be able to recover funds that are in those channels. 
So you'll want the static channel backup, which you can generate via the lncli export chan backup command or by copying the channel.backup file. This file contains details on the channels that your node has set up, which can help you to recover funds in the event that your node goes down or you lose some data. Also note that this file can only be used in conjunction with the node seed as it is encrypted with a key from that seed. You also want a copy of the channel.db file, which is the channel database. But be careful with this one. You don't want to just restore this manually as using an old version of this can make things worse and lead to the loss of funds. You really only want to use this in certain specific scenarios. Check out these two links to get a lot more information on the backup, migration, and recovery of Lightning Network funds. And now you've made it to the end of the video. I hope you now have a solid understanding of the LND node setup process, and don't forget to check out the Run LND guide and all the other documentation available at docs.lightning.engineering.